something, put a different chip in it? Or so the, the corporate policy is, right, we have not and probably never will enable people into the ECUs willingly. Um, there's a lot of legal emissions, government, and we'll... Right. And, uh, but I heard it's super hard to break the code on the existing ones. That's why you only get very few Given, given the current climate, right? We don't want people hacking our cars, right? So it's the same thing, right? It's they're they're encrypted for a reason for your safety and our safety. Well, how? Where I'm going with this? How? What do you think the true red line where it lets go? It's eight. 8,800, Well, eighty-six is where we close the throttles and hold it back. It. 84 to 86, the, the power is start. It doesn't fall off, but it, it's flat line. So the returns beyond that are diminishing um, versus getting a shift. Um, What's the highest you've done on the dyno? We have gone past 86 non-fire to validate other parts um, independently on the valve train and on the pistons, and it will go you above know, it. Yeah. But um, as I said, it, it comes with added baggage of vibrations, and you're not going to get any more power. So you're, you're, you're basically going to add risk and other things, getting fatigued for no benefit. It's Were these velocity stacks always part of the design? Or yes. So, so going into this, and it's kind of what Tadge talked about in the video, the, the big ask was let's get the Z06 back to natural gas break. But nobody's ever going to be happy. He said, oh, we're going to give you less power than you had in the last Z06, right? That's going to get a ton of booze. Yeah. So from the beginning, we knew we had a, a, a big task, a tall order. So... In order to get there with speed, you can't do it with displacement, get over 650, right? So it was always about tuning, tuning, tuning. Get the volumetric efficiency up, get the thing breathing at high engine speed, and the, the mid-engine engine architecture helped enable us quite a bit on the engine side, right? We have extremely low inlet restrictions and extremely low out outlet exhaust restrictions. If you think about it, exhaust is here, the tailpipe's about here, right? You don't have oh, it's open headers. Like on a C7, right? You gotta come down, you gotta go down another 90, through the tunnel, back out and around. The, the exhaust restriction is another huge enabler to do this. So yeah, but yeah, velocity stacks. Um, What's a butterfly to... valve? So, so, I mean, that... balancing like scavenging on an X-pipe? So exhaust. once again, the flat plane gives you the even intake events, plenum to plenum. The velocity stacks, then you can tune to an intake frequency, right? So a rate of air ingestion. Um, that tuning is gonna be to a narrow frequency. What the tuning valves give you the ability to do is you can change the volume you're working against, and you can change the way the pressure waves bank to bank interact with each other with the valves. So we use the valves to basically take that VE peak window and open it up. So this engine at peak torque has a volumetric efficiency of 110%. That stays over 100 until peak power because of the tuning valves. So you're actually getting more air in the chamber, or the pressure in the air in the chamber at full volume is 10% or 6% greater well, than atmospheric. atmospheric. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you're yeah. actually- it's like you're, a little supercharger. Right, you're, you're using the pressure dynamics to yeah. increase the air velocity. That's why it's this next- the out. 60s. It's exactly. a velocity stack from the 60s. So it's, a, it's the same thing only with today's analytical capabilities, it's optimized to, look. to the 10th, right? Is, is there a top speed on it yet? There has not been a top speed. Okay. The well, testing is not done. Time. If you were a betting man? <laughs> I'm not a betting man when it comes to outward facing things. I, this is what I do for a living. I want to keep doing this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I know on the Nuremberg trip, they, 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 they couldn't run a fast lap. They're going back. I know they want to, but it's their last task. They're going to do all their work first, and if they can, they will. If the, you need an open track, you need the right weather yeah. while they're there in Germany. But yeah, they don't yeah. want to crash it before you test it. Yeah, they're there to do the work, so they'll do that first. So Are we'll see what the big guys get. Oil squirters, this little tube I saw right here, this yes. cork chrome. Okay. Yep. Pretty cool. So, yeah, so it's, that's it's, why it's so efficient with the oil. Yeah, so if you feel, it's, it's basically each one is, is, is two, right? Yep. So they go side up against the bore, the bore wall for the piston. Is there any special coating on the sides of the pistons? So the the skirts have a typical polymer coating on it that we're used to seeing. I wouldn't call that any significant. The ring pack is unique. It's it's a very thin um, top two rings, much like the race car guys run. Once yep. again, for mass and ring flutter control, they are DLC coated, so they're crazy hard. 
once again, what the like LT6R sort of runs, things like that. Okay. Um, yeah. Super high strength forged aluminum pistons, um, titanium connecting rods. Once again, yeah. everything. Oh yeah, everything about this engine was with a flat flame crank was get the mass out of the crank. Anything that's spinning was first going. All the mass you can get that inertia down. Then reciprocate. Get this as light as possible. So. To make the piston as light as possible, you gotta use the best material, right? Because you wanna use the least amount of mass, but you need the strength. Totally. So, yeah, phenomenal piston. What are the pistons made of? It's forged aluminum. I, I'll i get you the exact number wrong if I try to pull. I think it's in the press release. Um, pistons out, actually come out of CP Carrillo just south of here in Oakland yeah. County. So we're, we're, buying, we're buying race cars. Yeah, that's race car stuff. How much does this weigh? This engine, I, I don't remember the exact number. I did do the math though. It only weighs one kilogram more than an LT2. So you're getting dough, 170 more horsepower, all that stuff at a mass penalty of a kilogram. So where we do have more weight in the heads and the valve frame structure, obviously, all that other stuff I talked about, more than enough pace for it in mass. And the the short block itself is shorter. Because the stroke, the, the stroke is only 80 millimeters, right? So the deck height is lower too. So all of that bought us the mass to do all the other good bits. Is it top. closer to the ground than the LT2? No, the crank center line is in the same place. And the bottom of our oil cooler is right on line with where the bottom of the LT2 oil cooler is. And the height, the same? The, the, the height, height is about 30 millimeters taller. Taller? Taller. So this, this, this intake stands up a little bit higher than the noise cover on the LT2. But it's still underneath the convertible pocket unit. Yeah. That, that was our upper limit we worked to because we wanted to maintain a convertible option. Yeah. Right, right. Well, thank you for that. And it's a steel what about, block. What, what about vibrations? Steel block? Steel. Block. No, the, the block is aluminum. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a steel crankshaft. Okay. What this, about vibrations? Was that a problem in development? Yeah. So, all the good stuff I just explained about the flat plane crank <laughs> is all good and true. There, the baggage is when the firing order is bank, 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 bank. The second order shaking mode in this direction is basically a Home Depot paint shaker. So, the good thing going into this as a project, though, being clean slated, is that was in every decision. That was like. You know, step one, it's going to be this. Okay, so then every other component has to absorb that, right? And then when we got our first multi-cylinder engines firing, the first three months of testing, all we did was move accelerometer accelerometers around. Every bolt, every component on the engine, and we mapped this thing like we've never mapped another engine before from a vibration point of view. Then all that was fed back into all those components. So the intake guy knows what he's living in. So he validates and designs to that. So we went in eyes wide open to it. Yes, there were challenges. Um, there's some components we had to add isolation to, 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 to reduce the vibration I got to them to solve it. Some we made stronger, some we moved. Some connectors we reoriented out of the plane of the shaking motion. As you can see, the oil filter is an internal cartridge style filter. You can't have a traditional can filter hanging off an engine with these shaking forces. So, um, so how do they change your oil? Right well, it's, it's got a cap. Oh, so it's basically a cap and then a cartridge. So the housing of the filter environment is cast into the block. The filter stays in the block? No, no, it's, it's a cartridge filter in the middle of it. The outer casing of it is the block. So when you take it out, you see the filter and paper on it. It's just a cartridge inside. So you put the cartridge Yeah, it's, it's a simple cartridge. The butterfly valves are forgot what you said. Is it basically a high RPM or what's the... They actually, so the rear one, yeah, the rear one is independent. These two are tied together. So there's basically two sets, even though there's three valves. And how dynamic or active is that? Through an RPM sweep, there'll be, it's around half a dozen changes between the two. Like they'll stay closed, one will open, one will close, one will open, two will open, close again. I'd have to get the map out. But it's quite dynamic across the RPM range, how much they're moving. And it's balancing, or what's the purpose? It, it, Why not just have that open all the time? Once again, it goes back to the velocity step velocity. tuning. Yeah. So velocity. if you leave it all in one state, the engine speed at which it's most efficient will be narrow in RPM. Changing this, you change your volumes, and you change the way the pressure waves communicate with each other. So you effectively can take that good VE that's really good here at seven grand, and you can expand it down to five and up to 86 with the tuning valves. Like three different manifolds. Like you open plenum, torque right. manifold versus the... And, and you effectively change the plenum volume, you change the dynamics of it. It's, it's what really enables that to, to totally move. Um, do you think this realistically go 100,000 miles? We're validating to it. We've run full validation engines the same length we've run LT2s to. 
we tear them down, the valve, the mechanical valve train is still in spec lash when it's built in. Is the, uh, the spec oil is 5W50? 5W50 Dexos R. Okay. And it's the same volume as the other? It, 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 I think it's slightly less. I forget what the LT2 is because I haven't worked on it in a long time. It, it's an 8 quart service. Okay. Eight, so, uh, yeah, that's ten. down from 10. Transmission different on the Z06? So I'm not as intimate with that, but what I know is it's essentially the same Tremec HBDCT. They did beef a few things up and the final drive is different to match the speed. And then what you were awesome saying about the back and forth, I asked you a long time ago about the vibration. Just go over that one more time real quick. You said the back and forth, and you're able to mitigate that until it gets up to the high RPM, right? Well, the, so, right. So from a driver's seat perspective, that's in engine and transmission mounting. So we, we isolate that from the vehicle at moderate engine speed. There was a conscious decision made in the mount structure at higher speeds to allow some of that to communicate through and restrain it. And it, I would say, to me, it's, it's visceral, it's not objectionable. You don't feel like a business. You just feel like the engine is, is, is moving the vehicle. But it is dampened to the point where road trips, commuting this or that, it's like driving an LT2 it's, it's smooth as butter and quiet. So I know that uh, somebody's probably already asked you this, but this engine has uh, AFM? It does not. It does not. It's a full, totally fixed valve train. With the way the, if you notice on the valve train, there's no hydraulics at all. The okay. lobe acts on the finger, acts on the valve. So direct, low mass, high precision control, um, not really an AFM friendly configuration. Oh, really? Okay. There's, there's no lifter there. Okay. Yeah, and we, as we told the others, so we, we net build these to shim to a clearance. So in, in Bowling Green Performance Build Center, when we build the cylinder head sub-assemblies, we assemble them, fully torque them down with cams and no shims. They're computer measured, cams come back out of the head, it goes into a big robot cell that then selects the 32 shims from 64 categories wow. for the valves, comes out, the operator retorts cams in it, measures it again, make sure the lash is good, then when the head is presented to the main line and goes on the engine and we torque the head down, cams go back in, then we measure it again. Triple verify, nothing changed, nothing happened between there and here, nothing wrong with that head, that it's totally in spec. Um, so we're absolutely sure we're lashed appropriately coming out of it. Is the said, factory going to be this for tours again? They, they, I know they want to, but it's the, uh, Bowling Green doing tours again. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it always runs through you know, those big cycles. When we're launching new products, we can't have people in there. Yeah. So there's always this sweet spot where there's a lull in product availability. Same thing, build your own engine is coming up. Except for oh, yeah. the mass thing. I mean, that's the only thing. The other thing is, is, is we're restricted on going in places too. So in the COVID situation has to be different too for us to want to, because we don't want to risk our manufacturing for an output, right? Because we've got a bunch of people. That's, that's real much. Is this where the name plant, the name of the builders? Yeah, I wish. We just changed that late, and I couldn't get one here in time. So I'm going to get one to stick on here. But yes, the builder well, magic would go here, and, and you can prominently see it from outside the vehicle. That's a great thing. The, the coops, if you lean over and look at the hatch, you can see the performance <laughs> build center, tech Corvette flags on it. What about the, the convertible, though? I mean, can you even see the engine with the convertible? The, the, the convertible's under a service car. So you can't even look at the engine? Yeah. So there's one right over there. You can take a look at it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'll be, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm, previous generations I was always about convertible, convertible, convertible. This one, because of the engine hatch, I'm torn. <laughs> kind of want to see my baby, but, your baby. I, but I love the convertible. <laughs> so I'm, I'm torn on that one, I love being able That's to see funny. it, but it's, 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 they both have their benefits. Well, maybe instead of having the black plastic one, you can have one that's, that's clear. Make a so clear you plexiglass down, one? You can still see yeah. through it yeah. a little bit. Just peek under the hatch every yeah. now and then. Yeah, but you can lower that window in the convertible and hear it probably better than the coupe. Well, that's the other reason I like the convertible better. With the top down and the windows down, the glorious noise is just so much more there with you. Uh, do you miss, do you miss the manual me. transmission? Originally, I did. This engine has pushed me all the way to saying I would hate this with a manual transmission. Mm -hmm. But is really? it faster? I think the automatic is faster. Now. It's, 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 it's always been faster. Yeah, it's always been faster. Um, 
but I agree, the third pedal engagement is fun. Yeah. yeah. This engine, when you even drive in tap mode, I'll admit, most of us struggle with the one-two shift. If you want to get the one-two shift at 85, 86, yeah. it's, it's hard to hit, and the control system does such a good job when you hit 86 of closing the throttles to hold it there, that you kind of look like an idiot when you miss it, because you're, you're going, it's yeah. and it goes again, right? So it's, it's, it's so, but if you put it in drive, right, it just hits it right on the mice, boom, boom, boom. As Ollie said in the video, it's just yeah, and so I, it's hard to keep up with it, even just with the paddle. I couldn't imagine trying to do other stuff yeah. with yeah, how fast stingray, this responds. The stingray, the that dual clutch transmission, just pulls and pulls and pulls. You can hear the gear changes, but you don't feel them at all. And Not if you think all. that pulls through the gears, this is a whole other right. world of an experience. The way this this. Is this gonna, the RPMs. Are, are the majority of these parts U.S. parts? Is this, this going to be made in Bowling Green? Yeah, it's going to be made in Bowling Green. Um, the, the, the parts are they're global. There's a bunch coming from the states. The the block and heads come out of Canada. Um, it just depends on the supply base and who had the expertise. What we need. Um, I think a lot of the valve train parts come out of Ohio. Um, but there's stuff from all over the world, depending on where the commodities are being made. Where the supply is. Huh? Where do you get the cams? Or does GM make them No, we do not make the cams. Yeah, um, it's like the pistons. Oh, Miss Speak, I'm not 100% sure where the cams are coming from now. I have to ask my Valtrain guy.